Hello friends, this video sequence and series part 10 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched video part 1 to part 9. Now understand geometric progression. It's a new concept. In geometric progression, we have constant ratio. Please note, in geometric cons cons progression, we have constant ratio. We'll take a scenario. The same scenario we have discussed earlier. A student is asked to double the number of math questions he practices every month. For example, let this guy be Ronnie. And Ronnie used to solve 10 questions per day in January. His teacher asked to double it every month. For example, in February, he is asked to solve 20 questions per day on an average. In the month of March, he is asked to solve 40 questions per day, average. Similarly, this is 80 and this is 160 and then during exam time, it will become 320. So this is March, this is April, this is May, this is June. So that's how it is. So Ronnie, you are solving 10 questions per day in Jan, he was asked to solve 20 questions on average per day in Feb, 40 in March and then 18 in April and then 160 in May and 320 in June. Now if you have to find the number of questions he has solved in from Jan to June or the number of questions he will be solving per day average in July, such kind of things is easy to find if you know GP. So in GP we have a constant ratio. For example, in this case, if you say 20 by 10, if you're dividing this by this, 20 by 10, this becomes 2. If you divide 40 by 20, if you divide 40 by 20, this becomes 2. Similarly, 80 by 40 is also 2. 160 by 80 is also 2. And 320 by 6, 160 is also 2. So if you observe here, the ratio is constant between any two consecutive numbers. So such such sequence is called geometric sequence or geometric progression. Now we'll define geometric progression in mathematical term. A sequence a1, a2, a3 till an or you can extend more is called geometric progression if each term is non-zero. Please note this is crucial. Each term is if even if one term is zero, if you keep multiplying number with that, it always gives zero. So each term should be non-zero, and any a k plus one divided by a k is equal to r. That means any term divided by the term prior to this, if you divide that, that becomes r, where k is greater than equal to one, and r is a constant. R can be less than one, r can be greater than one. Doesn't matter. Please note each term should be non-zero. And if you divide it into consecutive term, you get a constant ratio. That's all is about geometric progression. For example, we'll see one more example. 3, 9, 27, 51. So if you see, this is our GP. Because if you say 9 by 3, you get 3. You say 27 by 9, you get 3. You say 51 by, sorry, this is... It is 81. 81 by 27, you get. So this is a GP. Also, GP can be written as in this form A, AR, AR square, AR cube. So the one example we have where R is equal to 3. So we can write this GP in the form 3, 3 into 3. 3 into 3 square, 3 into 3 cube. A, A, R, A, R square, A cube. You can write in this form. You see, this is 3. This is 3 into 3, 9. This is 3 into 9, 27. And this is 3 into 27, is 81. So we have written this GP in this form, where R is the common ratio and A is the first term. Please note, we can write GP in this form. A, A, R, A, R square, A, R cube, A, R to the far. A R to the power n in this form where A is the first term and R is the common ratio. 
Let's take my example where we have to tell whether it is GP or not. So this is the first sequence. 1, 3, 9, 27, 51. So let's solve this. 3 by 1 is equal to 3. 9 by 3, we'll take this term and we'll divide by this term. It becomes 3. We'll divide this by this. 27 by 9 is again 3. And 51 by 27. 27. This becomes 1. 24 by 51. This is not 3. So you see all the terms are not 3. So this is not a GP. Let's take one more example. 6, 12, 24, 48, 96. We'll divide this by this. So 12 by 6 is equal to 2. Similarly, we'll divide 24 by 12. 24 by 12 is again equal to 2. 48 by 24. 48 by 24 is again equal to 2. And 96 by 48. So 96 by 48 is also equal to 2. So we see the ratio is constant. So this is a GP. Let's take one more example. 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. So 3 by 1 is equal to 3. 5 by 3 is equal to 1, 2 by 3. We know that this two ratio are not constant. It doesn't make sense for us to find other ratio because this will not be a GP. So this is not a so we see that only this is GP. Other two sequences are not GP. To find GP, we have to find all the ratios and we have to see that the ratio is constant. The ratio is constant, that means it is GP, else it is not a GP. Now I will thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.